Jace Tunnel here. Today, we're seeing if these moon jellies actually sting. So let's talk about what they are, if they sting, and uh, what you should do if you see one. Let's go. Today, we're over here at the Fisherman's Wharf, and what we got fl uh, floating around in here are moon jellyfish. Now, there's something about these moon jellyfish that some people say they sting, some people say they don't. So today we're gonna test it out. So I've actually got a bucket over here, my Yeti bucket, and we're gonna pick one of these things up and we're gonna test it out. But it also gives us an opportunity to look at these up close and personal. So these are definitely invertebrates and you'll see whenever they swim, they have kind of this pulsing uh, look to them because their bell is, which is the top part, is what's allowing them to move throughout the water. Um, but these are easy to see the difference between uh, these jellyfish versus other jellyfish because on the top of them, they have these four little clover looking circles on top and those are actually gonads. And so you're not gonna see that with uh, other species like this. And these actually get pretty large. So the ones that we're seeing today are adults. They live about a year. Um, although whenever they're babies, they're little polyps uh, and, and they can live up to 25 years. So they wait till the conditions are just right. Then they can pop off, be free floating and grow up to be adults uh, living for that one year period. Now, some of these, I'm just looking along over here, I can see they have sea turtle bites in them. So you can see the, around the bell, um, they'll have like little triangles taken out of them. That's where sea turtles uh, have taken bites because uh, sea turtles are probably their main predator. They love eating on these things. So if you look around the bell, that's where their tentacles are. And they're really short looking compared to some of the other jellyfish that you might know of, like uh, sea nettle. Uh, that have really long uh, uh, tentacles on them. Now, they're using these tentacles so that they can feed on plankton. So they're feeding on microorganisms. Every once in a while, you'll see some of these that have a fish that's uh, floating up under their bell. So the fish are there for protection. They can also feed on different things, um, you know, around the jellyfish. These can be found worldwide. So uh, anywhere where there's kind of warm water, uh, these things are found. Now, when these jellyfish are washing in, there can be tons of them. I mean, when the conditions are right, they just bloom like crazy. So let me turn the camera around here and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then look at that tide, look like right where the water is. I mean, they're everywhere. So there's literally hundreds, if not thousands of them, just going along the beach here. So, you know, when the conditions are right, they bloom, there's a bunch. Um, you know, what might be feeding on them out here? We already saw the sea turtles um, are feeding on them in the marinas and stuff where they're blooming. On the beach, once they get on the beach, you'll see these little birds pecking around them. There could be the, the fish and other organisms that uh, live around these could be with them. And then they could actually be feeding on the actual jellyfish. So uh, just something really cool about these. Now look at this one here. These are called oral arms. They have four oral arms that hang down. So this, is, this one's upside down. And uh, so the arms are actually on the top and then the bell is the bottom part. But these oral arms, you can see this one washed in at the beach, unfortunately, so it's gonna die. But you can see how fragile it is. They're just like falling apart there. Um, and then you can see the gonads here. See if I can pick it up. Um, it looks like clovers on there. And it's falling apart. Oh, here comes the water. Dang! Whoa! <laughs> okay, well, hopefully you get the point on how fragile they are once they wash up. And they don't live long once they wash up. They're, ma they're comprised mainly of water. So a day like today where you've got the sun out, um, you know, once they're washed up, they just start drying out really. And then the animals get to them. So they just don't last very long once they, once they get out of the water. Okay, so I got a bucket here. It's clear because I want to be able to see how these swim. So let's see if we can pick one of these up. I could still see it kind of moving around. We'll see if we can pick it up without it breaking apart. 
and that that can be hard to do so I'm gonna pick try to pick it way up underneath it pick it up real slowly drop it in there and let's see if we can get it to come alive Okay, I'm going to pick this up to see. Doesn't look like it's really moving, but it might take it a second. Oh, its arms are under the sand. Let me get the sand, the arms out. Okay, now maybe we wait for a second and see what happens. So, the question everybody wants answered. Do these sting? And what you gotta do, you ever wanna know something stings, you put it on the most sensitive part of your body. And I'm about to tell you. So this is on the uh, bottom side of my arm here. And yes, I do feel a little sting. Um, but if I had to do a scale from one to 10, I'd say it's a one, maybe a two. Now, this tells me if I got it on my face, that might hurt too. But compared to like a man of war or some of those other things that sting, it's actually not that bad. Um, so I'm gonna give it a, a number two if I had to say how bad it stings. Not that bad. Uh, it is leaving a little mark on there from the sting, but it doesn't hurt too bad, but man, it sure looks bad. They don't have a brain, they don't have a heart, they don't have any kind of uh, blood, but they do have this uh, nervous system type net that allows them to see uh, light. These are famous in aquariums, so if you've ever been here at the Texas State Aquarium, uh, they have large displays and they've got these moon jellies just floating throughout and then they'll have a backlight with them. Super cool looking. Okay, so hopefully you know something a little more now about uh, the moon jelly. And we're going to let this one go so it lives another day. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode of Beach Coming. Bye.